Hello guys and welcome in this video series about building a two-dimensional game in C-Sharp based on timer and picture boxes. So in the last video we learned how we could aid some enemies. But now those enemies are not able to shoot or there is no collision between player and enemies. In this video we are going to see how we can aid some collision event handler. So that when player and enemies get collide together then something happens. So let's get started. In one of my preview videos, I show you how you could add some sound effect. So actually we're going to use a sound effect when enemy dies. So actually in this video we're going to cover the part of collision but we will also add some sound effect so that when enemy dies then we have a, an explosion sound. So that's why I define this variable here, a new Windows Major Player. I call it explosion but you can call it whatever you want, it's not important. So actually. So I define it here and I initialize it as the other. So in the previous video, we said how you could add this sound effect. So just here, I create a new object for my explosion. So and there, if you don't have these assets files, you can go to the previous video and there you will find all sound effect. So actually, we have all sound effect in the debug folder. And there you have this sounds this sounds here and actually that's why i've written here so this is for my explosion so and here i just set the volume to six because i don't want it to be too loud so this is the first part of this the next thing you need to do is to create a new method so in my case i call it collision but you can call it whatever you want it's not important so actually this method is going to check all collision between munitions and enemies and between player and enemies so actually here we have the code for collision between player and enemies so if any collision between player and enemy happen then we just play the explosion sounds effect and then we bring the enemy back to the top where he will start moving from top to bottom so and if we have collision between player and enemies then we just make the player disappear let's try it out and see what happened actually and I'm sorry something I, uh, I forgot to show you was where I call the function collision so the function collision is simply called in the move munition timer so exactly here so when we move the munition then we just check if there is any collision between munition and enemies that that's why we use the collision function here so here we have it um, you can hear some sound effect when enemies are dying so but now what happened when there is collision between me and enemies, I mean the player and enemy. So I just disappeared but as you can see there are still munitions. So we're going to handle that by stopping all timers and uh, just restart, just clear everything and stop everything. So let's handle that. Now I will invite you to create three others method. So the first one is game over. I think the name is almost clear and the two others are stop timers and start timers so stop time start timers is for starting all timer we need to start and stop is for stopping them and game over is clear so what we actually going to do is when we got collision between the player and the enemies then we just game over so we make the player disappear and we game over so and what happened when we come when we game over we just stop the background sounds because we call it game media the background sounds and uh, we stop all timers that's it that's actually what we're doing when we want to handle this collision between player and enemy so if you have this you can just compile it and see what happened so let's make a collision between me and any enemies everything just stop and all we need now is to add some text for saying that game over and uh, actually that's why here as you can see our game over method has a string as parameter it's actually going to pass the text that we wanted to have when the game just finished so that's why we 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 put this string and here i just put, put a blank string so actually because i wanted to run but later on we will add some text we will when we add a label we will add then a text that will say game over or maybe nice done when the player just cover all levels so that's it 
now we will move a little bit on and see um, how we can now make the enemies being able to shoot so let's do this hey guys thank you for watching videos on my channel please hit the subscribe button for supporting me doing more such of videos thank you the first thing we need for making our enemies be able to shoot is a timer for their munitions so i just drag and drop a timer and i call it enemies munition timer so you have to do it yourself also from the toolbox here you drag and drop a timer and you set the name the interval should be 20 millisecond and in the beginning it should be enabled so directly when we start the game the enemies will be able to shoot so this is the first step now just go back to your code and there I'll explain you what you need to do. So here the first thing you need to do is to create a picture box for enemies munition. And you also need to create an integer for enemies munition speed. So the next step is to initialize this munition speed. So in my case I say 4 pixel. So that means each 20 millisecond, so I mean the, the timer interval, the munitions will move forward with 4 pixel. So actually and uh, the next thing we need to do is to set up the picture boxes for all those enemies munitions so i initialize so i create a picture box array with 10 picture boxes inside and here i just set up all those picture boxes with values and everything so the next thing i create a picture box i set the size i set the visibility to false the background color and here i just decided to generate a number between 0 and 10 so the size of our array because I need to choose dynamically which enemies are going to have uh, munitions that's why we do this here we just generate this number here between and we give it to the to the location and then we can set up then the position of the munition and actually the munition is going to be located where the enemies are and I use this minus 20 because I want the munition to be in the center of the enemy and finally we add our picture box in the tab control so this is the next this is important so all we need to do now is, is to make those picture boxes being able to move so i will simply invite you to go back to your design and double click on your timer so then you will have this enemies munition timer tick appear this is actually the method that will be called each 20 millisecond and he will help our munitions being able to move so now all we need is we just create a for loop and in that for loop we just go through the enemies array and we check if the actual munition it's not um it, if the position of that actual munition is not higher than our screen if not that man is still able to move from top to bottom then we just increase the position with four pixel and so go on and the visibility is true as long as it is in this range but if this is no longer the case then we set the visibility to false we restart the position so we we re choose which enemies is actually going to have this munition and we bring him back there so and that's what we do here so actually if you have this then you can compile it and see what's going on so that's it as you can see they are all able to shoot and now you are saying something we don't have any collision between me and enemy's munition and that's what we're gonna cover now so i just create a simple method for handling the collision between uh, enemy's munition and player so i call it collision with enemy's munitions so the principle is the same as before again i just go through a loop where i just run through the enemy's munitions table and i check if the bounds of our enemy's munitions actually got any intersection with the player bounds. If that happened, then I know that there is a collision. Then I set the enemy's munition to visibility to false. I make it disappear and I also run the explosion sound with a 30 volume. And uh, the player also became invisible and uh, I call the game over with uh, game over text. And uh, this text doesn't appear now, but later on we will write the part of the code that will handle that so let's compile it and check so let me hit myself and there we got it but we still have something you can see enemies are still able to shoot even if the game is over so the problem here is because we haven't stopped the timer for move munitions we can simply handle that by 
adding munition enemies munition timer stop in the stop timers method so if you have this you just compile it and let me die and there we got it so actually i will also invite you to add the same thing here but now with star we will see later on why we do that so this is important so guys this is all for now thank you for watching and being a part of this project so in the next video we will add some text label with uh, play pose a menu and i hope that will be the final part of this project so guys thank you again for watching videos on my channel medicode please remember the way you can support me is by subscribing liking and sharing my videos on social media see you next time